So we're going to hear about truffle hunting. And Lucia, are you there? I'm there. Can you see? Can you see them? You see the family? Not the truffle hunting dog? Yes, he's a hunting dog, but you know, you can train any dog. As long as they have a good sense of smell, you can train any dog. They have to have a good sense of smell and they have to be also obedient, obviously, because if they eat the truffle, then um, you're losing out. <laughs> so these two characteristics are very important when you, when you have a dog for truffles. They do have a specific breed called Lagotto, which is used uh, by quite a few truffle hunters. But then I've known lots of truffle hunters who have either hunting dogs or little mutts too. Very, uh, lots of little mutts actually are, are good at truffle hunting. Because all the, all, well, all, it's not so simple, but you have to train them when they're very little to um, like truffles. So everybody's got their own technique, but you feed them little bits of truffle when they're little. And for example, you put them in things they like, like you'll take a little piece of cheese and put truffle um, inside a little piece of cheese, then you put it underground and the dog will smell the cheese and dig it out and get a taste for truffles. And that's one of the training methods that you can have that of just, you know, omelet, for example, you can do omelet and put little bits of truffle in it and then always dig it. How do you call it? Not dig it. Just put the omelet, little bits of omelet underground and have the dog uh, dig up the little bits of omelet. How, how and does it take to train? Um, we're not going to be able to show any pictures because we were having some issues with oh. our our photography. But um, how long do you think it takes to train uh, to dig for truffles and not try to eat them when they find them? Okay. Federico, say this day online. Uh, this day, bella vista. <laughs> Chiedevano quando è che, quanto tempo ci vuole per addestrare un cane eh, a cercare i tartufi? Un anno, un annetto. Dunque, da quando è cucciolino? Sì, si comincia a... da quando ha 3-4 mesi fino a un anno. Ok, e so... poi comunque l'addestramento continua sempre, perché si sì. ritrova e più diventa bravo. Sì, è verissimo. So he was saying you start when the dog is about 3 months old and then you continue up until a year old, but you continue all the time. Like it, it never stops, because the more truffles he finds, the better he gets at finding them so let's say at one year of age the dog can start finding truffles for you but then he can always improve there's always room for improvement so this this is the truffle that they have found now this time of the year it's called scorzone i have to show you this scene is that they have a dog rolling it out here this is called scorzone so it's a summer truffle and as you can see, maybe, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's got a very rough skin. Can you see that? Yes. And inside, that's the inside. So this one's broken. So you can see that kind of brown and white inside. And it's called scorza because the Italian word scorza means um, like a skin. How do you call it? Like the scorza of an orange, the orange peel? Yes. Rind, rind. Scorzone means thick rind, big rind, because the summer truffle has a very thick rind due to the fact that it has to keep in its moisture. Because in summertime it gets very hot. If it had a thin skin, then the moisture would evaporate and you wouldn't have a truffle. So scorzone, the name refers to its thick skin. Now the summer version is nowhere near as expensive as the white truffle. Okay, so the white truffle is the most prestigious kind and is the one that you find from October to December. Then you have uh, bianchetto, which means little white one. So little white one refers to the fact that it is a smaller well, really smaller as much as it's not as fragrant, it um, doesn't have such a flavor as the white one has, but it looks a little bit similar to the white one and it's found, found right after. So up until say April. Then you have, uh, aspetta, eh, let me ask Federico here. Chai, il, um, bian allora, il bianco. Il bianchetto che è a marzo, poi il bianco pregiato che è da ottobre sì. fino a dicembre. Okay. Poi c'è il nero pregiato e lo scorso. Ok, lo scorso. Cioè lo scorso inizia lo verso... Lo scorso è da, da giugno fino a, a settembre. Sì, sì. Yeah, so... Più o meno tutto l'anno è coperto. So you basically have a truffle um, each part of the year. So I mentioned the white truffle, which starts October, November, December. 
then you have Bianchetto, which is January, February, March, April. And then say May is usually the month. Maggio il mese in cui ci si riposa, no? Cioè dai la sì. possibilità no, c'è, c'è alla la, riproduzione no, degli animali. Il nero pregiato, sì. So in May, generally speaking, in, in most of Tuscany, you don't go truffle hunting because it's reproduction season for the animals. So you don't disturb the animals. It's not so much for the truffles as much as for the animals. And, and then in summertime, you get the scorzone, which is the one that I just showed you. So, so. And uh, the, the scorzone is very good with the, the DOP. And we make oil. a pasta with uh-huh. uh, the olive oil and the yeah. truffle. So Tanya was just saying how this scorzone goes extremely well with the olive oil. So that's something you can combine. For example, if you were to come here, this is something actually quite new. We haven't really done it. We've done it, they've done it a few times, but it's not like standard to do the truffle hunt and the oil tasting. But we've been talking about it recently. I said, well, why not? That would be great for our tour. So that's something new that we want to put in is um, olive oil and truffle hunting yeah. combined because they don't sell their truffles. So that's why they just happen to have land which has all four different types of truffle growing on it because I mm, did not mention the Nero Pregiato, which is the prestigious black truffle, which we don't normally find in Tuscany because Tuscany has the other three varieties that I mentioned. But because they're right on the border with Umbria, their land has their, 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 their olive groves, their vineyard. They also has the um, Umbrian uh, version of the truffle. So four types on their land. Mm-hmm. They are very fortunate. They don't sell it, I repeat. They just, just do it for, they find it for themselves and eat it at home. And the, the reason why they have found all these four different types, Federico was telling me, was just because of the dog. So it's a dog that discovers that there are four different types of truffles growing on their land. Because usually a person can't sniff them out, you know. You need a good dog. Lucia, he's so well behaved, he's not trying to eat the truffles off the plate. È vero, si sta comportando molto bene, non sta cercando di mangiare no. i tartufi. Sa che lei li deve cercare sotto terra, non in tavola. She's well trained, she knows that she would be in big trouble if she were to grab a truffle off the plate. So yeah, that's why she's being good. So do you want to explain like when, because we offer opportunities to go out truffle hunting, do you want to explain the difference between if they come in the springtime versus the fall and the summer with the... Yes, they grow in different places. So the big difference is one, the flavor. Obviously the flavor is going to be very different because the white truffle, the more prestigious and expensive kind is the one that has a much stronger, more pungent flavor. Um, while the other versions have a much lighter flavor. So that you will notice if you were to taste the two, if you were to come at different times of the year. And another big difference is that the um, white truffle that you find in the fall grows in heavily wood, like wooded areas uh, along, um, say, riverbanks. They don't have to be rivers, but they can be like creeks or just um, streams. So you have to have, one, the proper shoes, like long pants, and I would say, running shoes, something that had grips because otherwise you end up slipping. So that's something important to know that there is some walking. I mean, you can't just find truffles <laughs> if you don't walk into the, in the woods. And so you need to be ready for that. While in summertime, they grow on flat terrain under pine trees. So easier places, uh, more accessible places, let's put it that way. So just to keep that in mind, you know, if you do come in the fall and want to go truffle hunting, bring the proper shoes, long pants, and be ready to do a little bit of hiking, you know, climbing um, along you know, slightly rough terrain. I'm not saying it has to be Indiana Jones, but, but yeah. <laughs> no. I have no, had Indiana. people come with the wrong attire. Uh, the reason why I was pointing this out is because I've had people come with completely the wrong clothing, like flip-flops or little sandals. That's in summertime too. And of course in the fall, they wouldn't be wearing sandals, but just skirts or scarves or just things that are not appropriate, you know? So that's why I, we always make a point of saying it. And then you go out for what, two hours to try and find the truffles. Yes. And yeah. depending on the season, and then depending on the weather, the climate. Um, exactly. 70% of the time, people will find some truffles with the very reliable dog, or is it less than half that you'll actually find? No. Some? We usually find the truffles 
travels that we usually find in travels that i mean depends on the season if it's a really bad bad season in the sense that it has rained way too much or if it hasn't rained enough then there's a chance that you won't be finding truffles but let's say if it's been a regular year then when we go out we normally always find at least one truffle and then the price differential like the very prized white truffle but let's say mm -hmm. the white truffle that grows here in southeast tuscany you sent over some pricing, but it looks like it's about a hundred euro an ounce for. No, it's more. That that photograph I sh I sent you, I took that photograph uh, at the festival in November, which is held in San Giovanni d'Asso, which is the White Truffle Festival, and the price tag there said three hundred and twenty euro per hundred grams. So that's three thousand two hundred euro per kilo. That's what the um, white truffle was going for in November 2019. And if somebody wants to come for the festival, which is mm -hmm. you know, just a, it's like when we come for the chestnut festival or the artichoke festival, the Italians are always having a festival. There's something being celebrated with food and wine, olive oil and food from the land. And what always intrigues me is they're always in period costumes. And so oh, yeah. I should, I sent you the picture of that, the period costume. It's true. Cause they always try, we always try and combine it. So that there's, there's food and then there's folklore. So the two are combined, generally speaking. Where possible. Uh, what, what week in October, <laughs> weekend in October um, is, I mean, it varies in this upcoming fall. I'm not sure even the Canadians are coming, but um, in a regular year, what would be the time frame for um, that festival if you really wanted to have an experience? The festival in San Giovanni? And the festival, yes. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'd have to check, but it's the second week of, week of November. Of November. Okay. So it's... Yeah, the okay. weekend of November. If somebody's willing to come at that time, um, they could truffle hunt and go to the festival and just totally indulge in the whole experience, correct? Yes. Yeah. Season, like I was with you with the group. I think Harvey and Martin might still be on if you are hello to Vancouver and Yelltown. But um, 